Today, we're going to look at the Grebes in the genus Podiceps. The reason I've decided to do this video next does need a little context. Every year, there is a competition in New Zealand to select Bird of the Year. This competition is run by Forest and Bird, one of New Zealand's independent conservation advocacy groups. And it can have some surprising results. For example, in 2021, they allowed people to vote for a species of bat, the New Zealand long-tailed bat, and it ended up winning. This year, in honour of Forest and Bird reaching its 100th birthday, they decided to alter the competition slightly to crown Bird of the Century. This caught the attention of comedian John Oliver, who decided to back an unlikely contender, the Australian Crested Grebe. This support led to the vote in 2023 being the largest in the history of the competition, with over 350,000 votes compared to the previous record holder, which was just over 56,000 votes in 2021. Given this international support, it is unsurprising that the Crested Grebe won, but its victory led me to realise I don't actually know much about the winner. So, I have decided to look into the Crested Grebe today, along with its closest relatives, to see what makes them so appealing and so unique. Grebes are diving birds in the order Podicipetiformes. This order only has a single family, Podicipetidae. This family has 20 species, spread across 6 genera, with an additional 3 recently extinct species. The order and family names comes because their legs are positioned near the rear of their body. This makes them look awkward when walking on land, but they are all excellent swimmers and divers. When swimming on the surface of the water, they swim low with much of their body submerged. They typically have a long neck and large feet, but other features can vary greatly depending on the species. Grebes have very unusual feathers. On average, they have over 20,000, which is the most of any bird. Their feathers are unusually dense and curved, although their length depends on the size of the species. Smaller birds will have longer feathers, while larger birds have shorter. This size and density is important for insulating the bird when diving in cold water. Grebes also expend the most time and energy on preening of any bird. Grebes produce a high amount of paraffin, which they use to waterproof their feathers, as well as protect them from fungi and parasites. When preening, they will eat some of their own feathers which are then fed to their young. The reason they do this is not known for sure, but it is theorised that it helps with controlling internal parasites and protecting them from the sharp bones of their prey. Grebes can also use their feathers to adjust their buoyancy by pressing them against their body. Grebes often have breeding plumage, which is much more colourful than the drabber coloration they use for the rest of the year. Many species also possess a crest of feathers on the heads, although in most species this is fairly small. I should note that most of the images I'm using in this video is of their breeding plumage. I have attempted to find at least one photo of non-breeding colours for each species, but this was not always possible. I guess people just don't like to photograph birds when they are less colourful. Their breeding plumage is much more iconic, but it does make it hard for identifying these animals in the wild outside of the breeding season. The phylogeny of grebes has not been well studied with molecular techniques, so the phylogenetic tree I'm using here is based on work by Sepka et al, who created it using morphological features. Because of this, grebe phylogenies can vary widely, and many other studies using morphology disagree with this greatly. For our purposes today, the differences between these studies are not too important, as I'm only using it to give myself a structure to cover this topic. Before getting into that, however, what are their closest relatives? The answer is slightly surprising. It is the flamingos. Grebes share at least 11 morphological characteristics seen in no or few other birds with flamingos. For example, both groups have 11 primary feathers on their wings, a trait only shared with storks. They both have a chalky coating on the eggs, a trait only shared with the distantly related galliforms like chickens, turkeys and pheasants. Grebe and flamingo muscles and skeletons also share some similarities. Before this relationship was first suggested in the early 2000s, it was assumed that they were most closely related to other diving birds, especially the gaviaforms, like the loons. However, molecular testing supports the theory that they are more closely related to flamingos, and so the similarities with loons are likely the result of convergent evolution. The first clade of grebes contains the genera Tachybaptis and Polyocephalus. Tachybaptis has six species, one of which was declared extinct in 2010. 
The genus name means quick diving, and these are all small grebes that are excellent swimmers and divers but cannot walk well on land. Five of the species are found in the Old World and are all recognisable by their chestnut head. These are all closely related to each other, and at least three are known to have interbred. The remaining species is in the Americas, and it's also the only one to lack a chestnut colouring on its head. Paleocephalus has two species, one of which is only found in Australia and the other only in New Zealand. These are small and specialise in feeding on aquatic invertebrates. The next clade contains two more genera. Rolandia only has two species, both from South America. These are easily recognised by the striking white on their cheeks and a small crest on their heads. Podolimbus has one living species and one extinct. The remaining species, the pied-billed grebe, is very distinctive due to its short bill and small crest. This bill is usually grey, but in summer will gain a black band of colour around it. In the final clade, the first genus is Eichmophorus. This has two species, which look a little like swans or cormorants. They have long, slender necks, small heads and a thin, pointed bill. They are both found only in North America and have been known to interbreed with each other. However, it is the last genus that most of this video will be focused on. This is Podoceps, the largest genus of grebes. We will be covering all eight living species, as well as one that went recently extinct. These species are found on all continents except Antarctica. They feed on fish, and many species are migratory, moving to the coast or warmer climates during winter. They lay two eggs near the water's edge, since the legs do not allow them to walk far from the water. The young are striped and have very different plumage to the adults. The adults will often carry them on their backs until they are old enough to swim for themselves. Instead of continuing to generalise about this genus, let's start looking at some of the species. The first is the Great Grebe, Podiceps Major. As might be guessed from the name, it is the largest species of grebe in the world, reaching lengths of around 80 centimetres or 32 inches. There are two subspecies that are widely accepted. They are only found in South America, with most of their populations being found in southern Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, Chile, and southern Argentina. There is another population in western Peru that is not connected to the rest of their range. Interestingly, one of the subspecies covers most of this territory, including the Peruvian one, with the other subspecies only found in southern Chile. Great grebes can fly surprisingly long distances, but to get into the air they have to run across the water to build up speed, while madly flapping their wings. They are considered least concerned by the IUCN, and are often found in flocks with hundreds of individuals. They live in open waterways, typically load in lakes, slow-moving rivers or estuaries. When breeding, they will migrate inland to heavily vegetated inlets off larger lakes. While outside of this, they prefer estuaries and bays, and are occasionally even seen on the open ocean. They feed mostly on fish, but will also eat insects, crustaceans, mollusks, and even occasionally chicks of other water birds. Most of the year, great grebes have muted colours, with a whitish grey head and a small darker crest on their crown. They have a notable streak of reddish brown colour down their neck. During breeding season, their colours become much more vibrant, with a greenish grey head, and the rufous colour becomes more pronounced. The crest on the head also becomes larger and turns a dark greenish colour. Like most of the genus, great grebes have elaborate courtship displays. While some of these displays are typical of grebes, they do not perform others that the group is known with. For example, they do not display while holding vegetation in the bill, a performance that we will look at more in the next species. Great grebes build a nest of vegetation floating on the water, which is anchored to the bottom of the lake by vegetation. The nest is built by both sexes. The female can lay three to five eggs, and the Peruvian population is able to breed twice a year. The more southern populations typically only lay one clutch a year. The eggs are incubated by both parents and take about 30 days to hatch. The most closely related species to the great grebe is the one that caused me to go down this rabbit hole in the first place. This is the great crested grebe, Podiceps cristatus. While it is found throughout the Old World, it has three subspecies depending on its location, with one in Eurasia, one in Africa, and the third in New Zealand and Australia. This last one is the newly elected bird of the century, and is more commonly known as the Australasian grebe, or by the Te Reo Māori name of Putekiteki. Note that the different colours on this map only indicate the bird's resident status, and not the different subspecies. Dark green means that they are there all year, while light green means that they are only there during breeding season. Blue means that they are only found outside of the breeding season.
Adults are highly distinctive during breeding season due to their prominent crest and ruff. This is black at the edges but becomes a lighter red or brown near the centre of the head. Outside of breeding season they have white cheeks and a black cap. Its eyes red and its bill is pink. This still makes them a highly distinctive water bird. Chicks are striped black and white but lose this as they grow older. Great crested grebes mainly eat fish but will sometimes eat insects, crustaceans, frogs and newts. Great crested grebes perform elaborate courtship displays. They will shake their ruffs at each other, approach each other with weeds in their bills and rise out of the water with each other turning side to side. They are serially monogamous which means that they only have one partner for the breeding season but will find a different partner for the next season. The pair build a nest together which like other grebes consists of vegetation floating on the water. They have two eggs and the young are capable of swimming and diving almost as soon as they hatch. Adults will often carry their chicks on their back and will teach them to swim by diving into the water leaving the chicks to float. The adult will then reappear a short distance away so the chicks have to swim over to it. The young fledge after 10 or 11 weeks but will remain with their parents for up to 16 weeks. In the 19th century the great crested grebe was hunted almost to extinction in the United Kingdom as there was a large demand for their feathers which were used to decorate ladies hats and garments. The Royal Society for the Protection of Birds was set up in 1889 to help protect the species and this helped their numbers in the UK to recover so they are once again common there. The great crested grebe is considered as of less concern by the IUCN due to their large distribution and being common throughout most of their range. However, some of their populations are still under threat. For example, the Australasian subspecies is declining in Australia and has become uncommon in New Zealand outside of the eastern coast of the South Island. Its largest threats come from humans interfering with lakes and wetlands, whether due to urbanisation, draining lakes or oil spills. They are also susceptible to avian influenza. Moving on to the next clade in Podiceps, we come to Podiceps auretus, or the horned grebe. Sometimes also known as the Slavonian grebe, it is much smaller than the grebes we have been looking at, reaching lengths of around 38 centimetres or 15 inches. As you are probably coming to expect with grebes, it has beautiful plumage during the breeding season. It has black cheeks, crown and back, with chestnut coloured neck and sides. Its most distinctive feature in its breeding plumage are the horn-like features that give it its common name. These are brightly coloured and can be raised or lowered by the grebe, similar to the crest seen in other species. Its red eye is even more noticeable on the non-breeding plumage when its colour scheme reverts to a more simple black and white plumage. One defining characteristic seen in both plumages is the white tip of its otherwise black bill. Horned grebes are found throughout the northern hemisphere in North America and Eurasia. They winter along the coastlines but move inland during the breeding season. There are two subspecies of the horned grebe, one in North America and the other in Eurasia. The main observable difference between the subspecies is the Eurasian one being darker with the American variant having grey feathers on its back. They dive underwater to feed on aquatic arthropods, crustaceans and fish. They eat fish whole manipulating it to swallow it head first. To cope with this feeding strategy they will pluck and eat their feathers from a young age. This creates a plug in their gut to hold the fish bones until they are completely digested. Horned grebes are monogamous and like other grebes will engage in elaborate courtship displays. There are four specific displays that they will use. They will first discover each other by adopting an unright posture, raising their horns and vocalising their loud advertising call. This will then lead to preening. The next stage is the weed ceremony where both birds dive to retrieve weeds and then rise together. They will then turn side by side to examine each other's weeds. This can re be repeated multiple times until both are satisfied. Finally, a head shaking ritual followed by a triumph ceremony can take place. Although these mostly seem to be for pairs that have bred together in previous seasons. Like other grebes, their nests are built from plant matter. While these may be on the water and anchored to the ground like other grebes, they will sometimes build them on land instead. They lay two eggs and the chicks can swim and dive within two days once they are hatched. They will ride on the backs of their parents for the first two weeks when the parents also need to ensure that they are kept warm enough. Chicks are able to fly between 55 to 60 days old. The horned grebe is considered vulnerable by the IUCN. Their population is estimated to be between 200 to 500,000 in North America and 13 to 18,000 in Eurasia. This threat rating is largely due to the 30% drop in their global population that is estimated to have taken place in the last 30 years. 
The North American population has experienced a 79% drop over this time, primarily due to human disturbance. This includes forestry operations around breeding sites and stocking lakes with trout which compete for invertebrates. Horned grebes are also frequently caught in nets and are vulnerable to oil spills and disease. This is all before considering the global decrease in wetlands due to drainage over the past few decades as well. The closest relative of the horned grebe is Podiceps grisogena, or the red-necked grebe. During winter, it is a fairly nondescript dusky grey bird. Like all grebes, it gets its distinctive plumage during breeding season. This includes the red neck for which it is named, along with its white cheeks and a black cap. It is a good swimmer and a particularly fast diver. It uses diving to escape from danger, instead of flying as other birds do, although it still can fly. As with the horned grebe, the red necked grebe also has two subspecies, one in Eurasia and one in North America. The North American subspecies is slightly larger and have slightly longer bills, although the differences are not particularly noticeable to casual observation. All populations are migratory, wintering at sea and then returning to the mainland to breed. When breeding, they will usually nest as isolated pairs with more than 50 metres or 160 feet between nests. Like other grebes, they have courtship displays, but these are particularly vocal for the red-necked grebes. They do the weed display mentioned in other species, but they also have a head lowering cat display. They nest on or near water to allow them to escape if needed. Interestingly, they often abandon their nests for significant periods of time at night to avoid predation. Whether this is to divert attention away from the nest or for self-preservation is unknown. While they help their young find food, they become aggressive with their older offspring. This is to encourage their independence and increases their chances of surviving after fledging. After breeding, adults molt their wing feathers and are temporarily flightless. Migration will start once they can fly again. During breeding season, they will typically feed on invertebrates, although this changes depending on the prey available locally. At other times of the year, they will prefer to feed on fish. The red-necked grebe is listed by the IUCN as least concern. This is due to its large pop range and large global population. There are estimated to be 150 to 370,000 individuals left. While the population trend is not known, it is not believed to be declining significantly. The next grebe species, off on a branch by itself in the phylogeny, is the hooded grebe, or Podiceps galadoi. It is listed as critically endangered by the IUCN, as the population has declined by 60-80% to 80% over the last three generations. There are now about 700 individuals left, but recent population estimates indicate that these numbers are remaining stable. If this trend continues, then it is likely that the IUCN will downgrade the hooded grebe's threat status. The main threat to the hooded grebe is the American mink. When this first reached southern Argentina in 2010, it killed more than half of the adults in a single breeding colony. It is also threatened by the introduction of trout and salmon to the area, as well as fluctuations in water level in their preferred lakes, with some being found completely dry. Volcanic activity also has short-term negative effects, but in the long term this actually increases productivity in wetlands, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. The hooded grebe is only found in isolated lakes in remote parts of Patagonia, in southern Argentina and Chile. When breeding, it is only found in basaltic lakes. When wintering, it is only found on the Atlantic coast of Argentina. Its characteristic plumage is its white body with black back, cheeks and cap. It has a rufous crown which is often peaked, giving it a hood-like appearance, leading to its common name. Podiceps occipitalis, or the silvery grebe, has two subspecies, a northern one, found from Colombia to northern Chile and Argentina, and a southern one, found in southern Chile and Argentina, although they can sometimes be found as far north as Brazil and Paraguay. The northern subspecies is listed as least concern, but the southern one is considered near threatened. The subspecies have notably different plumage. The southern one has yellow plumes on its cheeks and its throat is grey, while the northern ones have greyer plumes on their cheeks but a white throat. Non-breeding plumage is duller and lacks the tufts on its cheeks. Note that some sources list these as completely different species, but this is hotly debated, so I've left them together as a single species. Silvery grebes live in small groups and feed mostly on aquatic invertebrates. They will supplement this diet with crustaceans, shrimps and fish. Its habitat is typically freshwater lakes, lagoons and reservoirs, but it is occasionally found foraging on salty lakes too. It can be found from sea level up to altitudes of 4,000 metres or 13,000 feet. It breeds in colonies and composes nests of floating vegetation. 
These colonies can have upwards of a thousand breeding pairs in some regions. Their nests have been built closely together so that they are touching, and several can be built on the same piece of floating vegetation. The female lays one to four eggs, which hatch after 18 days. As is usual with grebes, the chicks are striped and often ride on their parents' backs. The Hunin grebe, Podiceps tajanowski, is the rarest of the grebe species, with only three to four hundred left. It is classified as endangered by the IUCN and is only found on or near Lake Hunin in the Andean Highlands in western Peru. Lake Hunin has been classed as a national reserve since 1974 by the Peruvian government to try and help the Hunin grebe and other endemic species found there. In 2002, another attempt was made to protect the lake, with harsher restrictions on water extraction, but thus far this law has not been properly enforced. An attempt was made to translocate Hunin grebes to the lake slightly north of Hunin, but this was unsuccessful due to gill nets used to catch trout. Further research is being conducted on other lakes where the grebes might successfully be translocated to. This work is important, as if anything were to happen to Lake Hunin, the species would certainly go extinct. Having backup populations elsewhere would lessen this risk of extinction. The population of Hunin grebes was over 1,000 in 1961, but in the 2010s was about 3 to 400. A nearby hydroelectric plant and droughts caused the water level to frequently drop below 5 metres, meaning that the grebes cannot breed. This is in addition to other pressures such as pollution and introduced trout that have caused native fish populations to plummet. It is flightless, so this grebe is sometimes known as the Hunin flightless grebe. It will still run across the water, flapping its short wings, but it cannot take off. The Hunin grebe has a black crown extending down the back of its neck towards its black or grey back. It has a white throat and its most striking feature is likely its bright red eyes. It is similar in appearance to the northern subspecies of the silvery grebe, and their distributions do overlap. It is a little smaller, however, with a smaller bill. Hunin grebes perform the same head-shaking courtship ritual as I have already described with other species. They build their nests in the reed border around Lake Hunin and typically lay two eggs. These nests are in eight metres or more of reeds, but they will not breed in years where the water level in the lake is particularly low. About 90% of their diet consists of small native fish, with the remainder being invertebrates. It catches fish by diving, but invertebrates may be caught on the surface of the water. They often dive and feed in small groups. The last living species in this genus is Podiceps nigricolis, or the black-necked grebe. Also known as the eared grebe, they are found in North America, Eurasia and Africa. There are three subspecies, with one being found on each of these landmasses. As you have likely come to expect, this bird has very striking breeding plumage. It has a black crest, with black or grey neck and back. It has rufous plumes on its cheeks and on its sides. The non-breeding plumage is much less noticeable, being brown or grey on its head and back, with a whitish belly and throat. Its red eye is much more striking on non-breeding birds, however, as it is contrasted more against the drabber plumage. Insects make up the majority of its diet, although this is supplemented with crustaceans, tadpoles, frogs, mollusks and fish. It has several ways of foraging for food. For insects, it can catch them on the surface of the water, when diving or when flying. It will also sometimes practice foliage gleaning, where it plucks them from the vegetation. For aquatic animals, it will usually catch them when diving. It is theorised that when diving in very salty lakes, they can block their mouth with their tongue to prevent swallowing the salty water. It typically avoids flying, but does migrate and can fly up to 6,000 kilometres or 3,700 miles. This migration is dangerous, however, and can result in thousands of grebes dying. Despite this, it is still considered the most common species of grebe, and is listed as least concerned by the IUCN. Its main threats are human-induced, such as pollution or oil spills, but these are not likely to impact global populations significantly enough to cause a decrease in its population. Black-necked grebes start to form into pairs during migration, or occasionally earlier, but courtship will not occur until they arrive at their chosen breeding ground. They perform displays in the middle of the lake, and will sometimes use the entire lake for this. To approach a potential mate, they will extend their neck and fluff out their feathers. Courtship will stop when nesting starts. Nests are floating, and anchored to the bottom of the lake with vegetation. Nests are low in the water, with the lip of the nest only being just above the water level. Brood parasitism does occur where females will lay eggs in the nests of other grebes. This is common enough that around 40% of grebes will raise a chick that has no blood relation to them. They can lay one to two clutches per season and typically lay three to four eggs at a time. Parasized nests will generally have two extra eggs in them. 
After hatching, the grebes will abandon the nest. While the young can swim and dive at hatching, they rarely do. They will stay on the parents' backs for the first four days after hatching. After 10 days, the parents will split the chicks up, with each taking sole care of around half the brood. After another 10 days, the chicks become independent. The Colombian grebe, or Podiceps indianus, was a species of grebe that was last seen in 1977. There were an estimated 300 left in 1968, but there were only two confirmed sightings in the 1970s. One bird was seen in 1972, and then three were seen in 1977. There were intensive searches to find Colombian grebes in 1981 and 82, but none were found. It was formally declared extinct in 2016. This extinction is attributed to habitat loss through drainage of wetlands, siltation and pollution. The Colombian grebe was flightless and lived in lakes and wetlands in inland Colombia. It was found on the Bogota savanna and eastern foothills of the Andes. It has sometimes been proposed to have been a subspecies of the black-necked grebe, but this has not been commonly accepted. It did have similar plumage to the black-necked grebe, with a black cap and throat, but brownish-yellow cheeks. Although its iconic coloration, this was its breeding plumage. The rest of the year its head was a more plain colour. When researching for this video, I could not find any information on their behaviour, but it can safely be assumed that they acted similar to other groups, with courtship rituals, carrying young on their back, diving for food, and all the things I've been repeating with every other species we've looked at today. Just be aware that this is my own inference and not something I could corroborate. Grebes are fascinating birds, and we have now covered all of the species in Podiceps, the largest genus, from the rare Hunin grebe to the flashy great crested grebe. They are a unique group of animals with many features seen in few other animals. Thank you for listening, and feel free to suggest another group of animals you want to see me cover in the comments.